everyone. Today we're going to focus on our charting module and we're going to talk about our preferences today and how to get those customized and set up for your office. So when we talk about charting preferences, what I'm talking about when we look at the chart is what colors show up on your odontogram, what quick pick buttons are customized, and what lies under the drop down menu for each of these uh, quick pick buttons here. Also within our perio chart, we will talk about at what point do your numbers turn red? And we'll also talk about missing teeth and whether we want to skip these within our perio chart or not. And let's get to it. So that's going to be our focus for today, short and sweet. From our practice management screen, if we go to our file preferences, this is where our default settings lie for our software. So we have a couple of tabs here that are going to pertain to your charting module. You'll see we have a perio, a chart, and a quick picks tab. So we'll go ahead and start here with the perio. You're going to decide what path or process you want to chart in. Um, anytime in these preferences that you see an asterisk, it's basically telling you that this choice is workstation specific. So if you select, you know, this option for this workstation, it can very well be different um, on your teammates workstation. I know that not all uh, providers perio chart in the same order. So this is where you're gonna go ahead and select the default for that particular workstation. If your default isn't here, um, you know, like I said, we all taught, we're taught differently and over the years kind of formed our own routines and paths. You can set your own uh, path up if you'd like. Um, and basically you see it's telling you the buckle of number one here, the lingual is gonna be on this side. So if you wanna, you know, chart that one first, you know, excuse me, you're gonna go ahead and put in the numbers the path of which direction you want to go in. So you can create your own if, if your path isn't there. Use previous perio data when starting a new exam. This is a nice popular feature. So anytime you pull up a patient's perio exam who, who have had one in the past, it's gonna go ahead and populate that last exam that was there. So you can see right away what your previous numbers were. You can also select to print your perio chart in color. If you want to show patient alerts when you pop um, when you populate your perio chart, you can do that as well. This right here is going to determine at what point does your perio probing number turn red. So if you want it at five millimeters, four millimeters, you know what have you, you can go ahead and select that there. Indicate teeth width. So you have the option to go ahead and indicate teeth um, with these conditions here. Um, implants is a very popular one to have selected. And then this here, auto advance should skip indicated teeth that are missing. So this is a good thing unless you're charting and probing, you know, your implants. Um, because an implant is actually considered, you know, a missing tooth. So your, um, your perio charting would actually skip that implant if you check this uh, box. I know some people probe them, some people don't. So it's up to you, um, you know, how you want to uh, select that there. And then again, um, these are some color colors you can pick from. I usually just leave all this information as it is. When we take a look into our charting uh, tab here, this is where our custom colors come in here. So I typically like to go off the good old 
red and blue pencil days um, where existing was blue, proposed was red. I know some offices like to chart their uh, proposed as green. Green means go, green means, you know, green's the color of money. That's the thought process I hear of from, from several people, but I, I stick with the blue and the green. Um, I also change anything I refer out to orange, so I can simply just select it. Anything rejected, I kind of just do like this yucky pea green kind of, um, and I'll put my walk out as um, a green as well here. Um, so, you know, you can go ahead and customize these, these colors. One thing to consider is your condition color. So any condition that you chart is going to be the color you pick here. Now, taking into consideration, we can have a condition, um, a cracked tooth. Um, we can have a condition, an abscess. A missing tooth is also a condition. So all of those are gonna have the exact same color. Now, I know there's some people who, you know, decay is a condition. They want their decay to stand out. They want their decay to be red. I, I get that. But it's not just the decay that's going to be red. Your, your missing teeth are going to show red as well. So the chart gets kind of busy and, and bright. Um, so it's just, it's up to you by all means. I prefer to just go with this, this light, this gray color here. Down here on the bottom, you can choose to use a solid fill, which is what I have here. Or you can use hatching. You can also change your width of your hatching. Okay, now it is possible to use uh, service colors. So if, it's, if each of your services have a different color, such as your crowns, maybe a gold crown, you know, you want to be a different color than your porcelain crown or your amalgams, you want to have a different color than your composites, so on and so on. You can do that. It just gets confusing um, because some of the service colors may be the same as some of the status colors. Um, and really, how are you going to memorize all those colors? So there is a way to see, really, when you look at that chart, um, what the actual material is. And, and we'll go through that. You can also set up your default surf surface view here. And we'll get into that when we when we take a look at our chart. Now, if you're a pediatric dental office, you would want to uncheck this. This says use permanent dentition for default. So if you're a pediatric office, you're probably going to want that primary dentition defaulting. So you would go ahead and uncheck that. Okay. Moving on, click picks here. This is where we're going to set the, the um, main quick pick button. So let's go ahead into the chart and take a look. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So you'll see that this alert window pops up. I did have the option in that preferences screen to disable this, but I, I think it's a great idea for these alerts to pop up in the chart screen, the chart window. So these over here on the side, these are our quick pick buttons. So they are here to make charting and proposing treatment uh, a lot more faster, convenient, um, efficient. So there's typically one header quick pick button, which actually is a service code if you click on it. And then your drop down is going to contain service codes that relate typically to that main button. So the main button is really going to be the codes you use most often. And what is uh, drop down here would be anything that you use just a little less frequently. So back to our practice management file preferences here. When we click on that quick picks tab, this is where you're going to set your main button defaults. Okay. So if you want to um, maybe change the periodic exam to a comprehensive exam, anything in EagleSoft that is blue and underlined is a hyperlink. So if you click it, it will take you to a list of information. So if we wanted to make um, 
you know, maybe the comprehensive oral evaluation, the main button, we would just select it. And now you see that it changed it. If we just simply wanted to unassign that button, if we right click, it's, it's going to unassign it and leave it blank. But I'm going to go ahead and put back my periodic oral evaluation there. And with a lot of these things, if you change them, you'll see when you hit OK, changes made to system preferences will not take effect for each workstation until you're logged off and logged back on. So you do have to log off and log back on to go ahead and reset and, and make these changes. So that is our, our preferences. Now, how do you get um, the, the service codes into the drop down area here? We're going to do that from our practice management screen under list. And you're gonna do that in your service code. So in your actual service code. So for example, when I go find my comprehensive oral evaluation, I click and hit edit. It's gonna bring me to this edit service code window. In this chart setup here on the right hand side, button group right here. So this is where you'll go ahead and pick. When you go to that drop down, it's going to have a list of all of those main quick pick button um, headers there. So you'll go ahead and pick that corresponding button group of where you want that code to lie. Now, we also have within EagleSoft uh, exploding codes. Well, we don't have them, you create them. So if you look at the top of my service code list here, You'll see all of these codes with a period in front of it. And when you take a look over here, so when we take a look over here, you'll see exactly what codes lie within this exploding code. So I place the period in front when I create these codes because it does bring it to the top of the service code list. So it truly does make it just a lot easier to find these codes, which is the ultimate goal. Um, and we'll go through creating one of these, but as you can see, I do have a couple of exploding codes here for new patient appointments. So period NPAP, new patient adult profi. So this is gonna have my new patient uh, exam, you know, my comprehensive exam, uh, my, my full mouth or whatever x-rays I, you know, I put into that service or that exploding code and profi. Uh, NPCP, my new patient child profi, right? Uh, we have one for implant, so extraction of the tooth, placement of the implant, the abutment, the crown, and then the seat appointment. So truly, when you're proposing treatment, um, these exploding codes really make it so much uh, more time-saving. So we'll go ahead and go through those real quick. Where do we make exploding codes? So under lists, of course, everything's under list, guys. Under list. And we'll go here to exploding codes. So you'll see the ones that are already within my system. And let's just take a look. We'll take a look at this um, AP4. So this adult profi for bite wings. So you can truly, um, you know, call it whatever you want. There is a five character limit and that does include the period. So you gotta be creative. Um, but again, bringing that period in the front brings it to the top of the list, so it doesn't make it hard to find. Um, so when you look at this here, we've added three codes to this one exploding code. We've added the periodic oral evaluation, the profi adult, and four bite wings. I also have it under a button group. So when you make that exploding code, you can very easily put it under a button group. You can also make it your main uh, button as well. So that's an option. When we take a look here, you know, not every adult profi needs uh, four bite wings, right? So maybe we have an adult profi with an exam and fluoride. So you can truly make as many of these as you want. Um, you know, you can simply include everything as well and, and remove it um, as needed when you're entering that into that patient's chart as well. So it's up to you, but these are really, um, really a nice feature to have 
in Eagle Soft. So if we wanted to make one, I would hit new. Well, let's see, what do we have here? Um, adult Profi for bite wings. Let's make one for adult Profi exam, four bite wings and two PAs. Cause I know sometimes we do that um, within our, our bite wing exam. So I'll go ahead and hit new. I'll start with my period and I'll hit AP for adult profi. And then I'll hit, um, excuse me, I'll hit four and two. Again, you know, however you want to describe that, it's entirely up to you. I'll do periodic exam, uh, adult profi. I'm just simply typing this in here. My typing skills get really bad when I'm when I'm trying to uh, do it on on video here. So forgive me. Four bite wings to see terrible. <laughs> Four bite wings, right? Two PAs. Display abbreviation. I just usually put the same thing. And then button group, I'm going to put it that under my um, adult profi button group here. Now I'm going to add the codes. So my service code will be a 00120 for, for the exam. Let's try that again. Oh, I have mine under D's. Try that again. Here we go. And I'll do my profi. I'll do my bite wings. I can remember my codes. And then I'll do my PA. And then I think that's a zero. Okay, so now you got all your codes in there. If you'd like, you know, you can go ahead and put in if you have an admin code. Uh, for perio charting or oral cancer screening or OHI, you know, you can certainly add those. Okay, so I'm gonna hit okay. And now I see my exploding code is right down here. Now, let me take a look here. I wanna just take a look. Um, so we'll see, you can actually see that we did indeed, there is an exploding code as the main button here. So if I'm going to propose um, for the next appointment, you know, these services, I simply click it and it's going to go ahead and walk me through each window here. So it's showing me periodic oral eval. Okay. It's showing me the profi. I hit okay. Bite wings, okay. So that was that um, exploding code that's there. And I'll go to the drop down, and then here's the exploding code I added and placed in that particular button group. So now we can see on the bottom, we have um, everything I just proposed. Let me scroll up so you see the profi, the bite wings, and the exam all under today's proposal. One other thing I, I really want to point out here before I end this video today um, is your right click menu. So if you right click on any tooth, any image, well, first of all, if you simply click on any tooth, just your left click, you'll see any image that is tied to that tooth that has that tooth number in it. But if you right click and you click on history, it's going to go ahead and show you everything you've ever done to that tooth in the office or charted for that tooth. Okay, so they came to us, Charles came to us in 2004. We did a perio exam. We charted a mesial drift condition. We, you know, we completed uh, in 2011 a resin. So everything that's ever been done or charted on that patient will show in your right click. You can also edit from your right click menu. So if you propose something and it's incorrect, right? You can just simply scroll over, click on it, 
and make any correction. If it, you know, if the correction, if it's a completely wrong service, you can certainly delete it as well. Okay, bring to top is simply going to show you, um, you know, any other service that's been attached to it in the past or um, proposed. So if you wanted to see um, what's been, let's see what's been um, completed. If you hit bring to the top, excuse me, let's try this again, or propose, just propose. So now it's just showing us um, that we have a proposed crown there. But if we wanna bring to the top what we have proposed and completed, well, it's showing us both of them as well. So sometimes things get hidden when we chart over it. So let's take a look at number four. So if I right click bring to top, what it's showing me now is what we've completed. Okay. We can already see the distal drift there. Let's, let's take a look here. Let me right click again. Sorry, I'm trying to find a good example for you here. So, okay. Let's see here. Let me edit first here. I have a dog in the background that was just snoring. So if you heard that, that's what that is. Um, let's find a good example here. history let's take a look at what we've done on number 19. great so we have completed a crown here okay so number 19 we show a blue completed crown if i right click and i bring to the top what was existing before they came now you see that it's showing that previous amalgam that we had charted but if i just want to bring the top now and just show that it's been completed there's no more amalgam then we would click that. So, sorry, I was trying to get a really good example and that wasn't that wasn't easy. Um, so your right click menu is your friend. Another great feature of the right click. So if we um, wanna add a watch to a tooth, if I right click and add watch, it's gonna ask me which surfaces I'm watching. So maybe I see a small incipient lesion, you know, on the mesial on x-ray, I can write, you know, check mesial. on x-ray okay so once i do that now when i click away we see this yellow highlighter patient comes in for their next checkup i see this i wonder what we're watching there if i if i right click and hit view watch it's going to show me exactly what i marked last time so i'll know what i'm checking what i'm watching and then if it's time like that incipient lesion has progressed and it's time to do a filling, I'd simply right click and hit remove watch. And then I could go ahead and propose, um, you know, my filling there. Okay. So that right click menu is really great. And, you know, if for some reason too, we have a, a primary tooth here, you know, a retained uh, primary tooth, we can simply click that and it'll bring um, that tooth back to the primary tooth. Or you could just highlight it and click primary as well. So a couple different ways to do that. So you could essentially create a mixed dentition as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. Um, the goal was to really go over those preferences um, and how to get those set up. So that's the end of this recording. Stay tuned. We're going to have a more in-depth look at the charting. We're going to talk about treatment planning, auto notes, um, the prescriptions, lab tracking, the smart doc, uh, the messenger, and we'll get to uh, medical history as well. So stay tuned for more webinars. Thanks.